Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Basili, your orthopedics faculty with Maro. Um, let's discuss the questions from orthopedics that were asked in the INI set exam. They were pretty straightforward and let's see if they were. The first question is anterior dislocation of the shoulder is likely to result in the damage of which of the following nerves? Now, I'm sure all of you are able to answer this. This is a straightforward question. This is a factual question. There's not a lot of understanding here. The correct answer is yes, axillary nerve. And why is it so? Because axillary nerve runs in very close proximity to the shoulder joint. It is very well protected. And in fact, it, if it has to get injured, it is usually because of either the proximal humerus fractures, glenoid fractures, or shoulder dislocations. Otherwise, it's very unlikely that it will get injured. And if it gets injured, what is the manifestation? The neurological manifestation is in terms of motor loss and sensory loss. Motor loss will be in, in the loss of deltoid function and teres minor function, where the patient will be unable to abduct and externally rotate, respectively. And sensory loss would be in this area, the proximal and the lateral aspect of the arm. This is known as the regimental badge area, where the patient will have paresthesias, tingling, and numbness. So this is your axillary nerve involvement in shoulder dislocation. Similarly, these are the other injuries that are associated with other nerve injuries that I'm sure you should know about because they are very, very important for your exam. A very few important ones are anterior and inferior or any kind of shoulder dislocation will give you axillary nerve injury. Shaft of humerus fractures will give you radial nerve injury. Supracondylar humerus fracture will give you anterior introsious nerve more than a median a nerve injury. Montagia fracture dislocation because of the radial head dislocation will injure the posterior interosseous nerve. Hip dislocation will injure uh, the sciatic nerve. So these are a few important ones. Otherwise, all of them are important. So let's move on to the next question. Which of the following is false regarding hip dislocation? Posterior dislocation of hip has flexion and adduction. Is it true or false? Yes, posterior dislocation of hip, if you recall, has flexion, adduction, internal rotation with limb shortening or lengthening? Shortening, yeah. So this is true. Vessel injury is more common in anterior dislocation of hip. Hmm, I don't know if you know this or not. So let's just hold on. Nerve injury is more common in anterior. Again, I don't know if you know this or not. So let's just hold on. Posterior dislocation is more common than anterior. Obviously, yes, the most common type of hip dislocation is posterior dislocation uh, more than anterior, right? Now the confusion is between B and C. Vessel injury is more common in anterior or nerve injury is more common in anterior. You see the important nerve behind the hip is the sciatic nerve and the important vessel in front of the hip is the femoral nerve. So anterior dislocation is usually associated more uh, with vascular injury rather than nerve injury, although nerve injuries can also occur. And posterior dislocation is usually associated more with nerve injury rather than vascular injury, although vascular injuries also occur. So the correct answer here is nerve injury is more common in anterior. This is the uh, false statement. Now, do me a favor and quickly review the hip dislocations. There are two types, pure dislocations and fracture dislocations. Pure dislocations are posterior and anterior. Posterior patient will have an attitude of flexion, adduction, internal rotation with limb shortening. And the head of the femur will be palpable in the gluteal region, right? And in anterior dislocation, the attitude of the limb uh, would be flexion, abduction, external rotation, with limb lengthening and the head of the femur would be palpable where? In the scarpus triangle or the femoral triangle or the anterior aspect of the hip, right? Now, what about the fracture dislocation? Fracture dislocations can be any attitude other than the ones that I have described over here. So it can be anything other than this, okay? It can be flexion, abduction, internal rotation, or it can be flexion, adduction, external rotation, lengthening or shortening. Something has to change from these pure attitudes. And then how will you know whether it's anterior, posterior, or central a fracture dislocation? Just by palpating the femoral head. If it's palpable in the gluteal region, it's posterior fracture dislocation. If it's palpable in the scarpus triangle, anterior fracture dislocation. If it's palpable on per rectal examination, it is central fracture dislocation, right? What are the complications? Avascular necrosis is the most common complication. Neurovascular injuries, sciatic nerve, Yes, particularly in posterior dislocation, femoral nerve in anterior dislocation and femoral artery or femoral vessels in anterior dislocation of hip, right? And these are the attitudes of posterior and anterior hip dislocation. What about reading them on x-ray? Look at this x-ray. Clearly the head is outside the acetabulum, so it's a dislocation. Shenton's line or Shenton's arch is broken. 
GT tip is proximally migrated, so there is some shortening. Lesser trochanter is not visible, which means that there is internal rotation, and the thigh obviously looks like it's adducted, so flexion, adduction, internal rotation with limb shortening. This is posterior dislocation of hip. So quickly remember, posterior dislocation of hip is the most common type of hip dislocation. Sciatic nerve is the most commonly involved nerve in posterior dislocation of hip. Anterior dislocation involves femoral nerve and femoral vessels. Vascular injury is more commonly associated with anterior than posterior hip dislocations, right? Just remember this, anterior dislocations will involve vessels more than the nerve, although nerve can also be involved. Again, look at these spotter kind of questions. This is an attitude of flexion, abduction and external rotation. So this is anterior hip dislocation. This is flexion, adduction and internal rotation. So this must be posterior dislocation of hip. X-rays may, this is your anterior dislocation of hip. This is your posterior dislocation of hip. And this is clearly the head is moved inside the acetabulum into the pelvis. This is your central fracture or dislocation. A very, very important topic for your exam. The next question is pretty straightforward one. Most common pattern of POTS spine involvement is POTS spine is tuberculosis of the spine. Which pattern is the most common one? A paradiscal, central, anterior or posterior? I know you know the answer. The answer is paradiscal because remember a tuberculosis is a two vertebral disease where uh, because of a common somite, common sclerotome, the blood supply reaches and supplies the intervertebral disc and the lower half of the upper vertebra and the upper half of the lower vertebra which are contiguous and continuous to each other they share a common blood supply the root of infection is hematogenous that's why paradiscal is the most common type of tb spine the other types as well central anterior and posterior but paradiscal is most common a few important points here, uh, the deformities that are associated with vertebral destruction are the knuckle, the gibbous and the kyphosis. Knuckle is when one spinous process becomes prominent because of vertebral compression. Uh, knuckle is one, and whereas a gibbous is two or three spinous process becoming prominent and if more than three, it's called angular uh, kyphosis. Uh, again, remember a two vertebral disease or paradiscal involvement is mostly tuberculosis and like how we used to tell everyone is a good disc. Now, if the disease process that is involving the spine uh, starts impinging on the spinal cord, it leads to POTS paraplegia. A few MCQs here that they ask is what is the earliest neurological sign of POTS paraplegia? It's ankle clonus or exaggeration of the deep tendon reflexes. The last thing I want you to remember is that if you see a lesion in the spine on X-ray or CT or MRI on your exam, to see if the disc is involved or not. If the disc is involved because of the disease process in the spine, it is usually tuberculosis. And if the disc is not involved, uh, it may be a metastasis or some other pathology that you should look for. It is said that good disc is bad news and bad disc is good news because a good disc is bad news means if the disc is not involved, it must be metastasis. And if bad disc is good news because if disc is involved, it must mean that it's tuberculosis or infection which can be uh, treated. Now let's look at this question. A 60 year old patient presents with limping gait and left hip pain. What is the likely diagnosis? So this is a pretty much spotter kind of a question with a little bit of hint here where there is a, they, they are saying there is a limping gait and there is hip pain, obviously. And what is the diagnosis? Essentially spotter questions. What do you think is the diagnosis here? Is it tuberculosis of hip, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, avascular necrosis? Just looking at the x-ray, you notice that there is increased density in the sphere of the head of the femur. The joint line is apparently maintained. Okay, the joint space is there. So it doesn't look like a disease that is involving the articular cartilage just yet. But the head of the femur looks dense and the smooth congruity or the smooth uh, sphericity of the head is kind of disturbed here. So this to me looks like avascular necrosis and that is the answer here if this was the particular image. Now let me tell you, there is no confusion here in terms of rheumatoid arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis because rheumatoid arthritis is a disease process that involves the synovium leading to destruction of the synovium and cartilage and eventually what will happen is in instead of increased density of the head of the femur, there will be osteopenia or osteoporosis of the head of the femur. Ankylosing spondylitis usually does not affect the hip. Initially, it affects the sacroiliac joint first and even if it affects the hip there are a lot of syndesmophytes there uh, a lot of uh, syndesmophytes here that are enthesitis uh, that is seen in ankylosing spondylitis here this is a clear-cut case of avascular necrosis and why not tuberculosis of hip tuberculosis of the hip is the disease of the joint it involves the articular cartilage leads to destruction of the articular cartilage 
So look at this X-ray over here. You see that there is pretty much no space between the acetabulum and the head of the femur. The articular cartilage is involved. Here again, the end result of uh, tuberculosis of the hip is fibrous ankylosis. If you recall, it's fibrous ankylosis. The cartilage is destroyed and the bone fuses with the other bone in the form of fibrous tissue. And that is fibrous ankylosis. So this is fibrous ankylosis. This is total destruction of the joint. Here, the joint is maintained. In avascular necrosis, still the very late uh, stage of avascular necrosis, the articular surface of the joint line is maintained. So this is a diagnosis of avascular necrosis. Let me just remind you of how avascular necrosis looks like. It is because of a precarious blood supply and there can be avascular necrosis because of neck of femur fracture or it can be idiopathic because of consumption of steroid. This again on x-ray looks like an increased uh, density of the head of the femur with loss in congruity of the head of the femur. This is avascular necrosis of the head of the femur. Uh, this again here is a talus uh, which shows avascular necrosis of the body of talus uh, which can be because of a talar neck fracture. This is an x-ray of scaphoid where the proximal pole of scaphoid shows increased density. Um, this is avascular necrosis of the proximal uh, pole of scaphoid. Avascular necrosis, a refresher point is the most common cause is idiopathic. There can be trauma also like neck of femur fracture, neck of talus fracture, waist of scaphoid fracture, which I just described. Steroid use is among the most common associations uh, with avascular necrosis of the head of the femur. So if on your exam, they mention patient has difficulty squatting, has limping, following consumption of steroid, or a patient is a long-term use of steroid, and now complaints of hip pain, uh, think of uh, avascular necrosis. Uh, they can also say it's a bodybuilder using medications to enhance performance. All of these things suggesting that the patient is using steroids. So if patient uses a steroid, there is a chance of increased risk of avascular necrosis. That is a pretty much a straightforward case of AVN without a doubt. The last question that was asked in INI set is a 10-year-old child comes with a swelling in the tibial diaphysis. X-ray shows a reaction on the surface of the bone. Biopsy of the lesion shows small round cells and MIG2 mutation. What is the likely diagnosis? Even before looking at the options, I pretty much have the diagnosis in my head, right? Because I have I've taught you this so well. And this has been hammered into your head. Tibia diaphysis getting involved in a child there is a lesion there what do you think it is diaphysal are two tumors having sarcoma and osteoosteoma this has small round cells with mic2 gene mutation right this is what gives you cd99 positivity this is having sarcoma without a shadow of doubt so the answer here is having sarcoma other options do not apply Ewing sarcoma, if you recall, uh, is a small round cell tumor um, which occurs in the long bones, starts in the metaphysis but ends up in the diaphysis. It's because of uh, translocation that occurs, translocation 1122. Translocation 1122. The patients have uh, CD99 positivity because of MIG2 gene mutation and on biopsy, there are small round blue cells with pseudo rosettes that are a uh, pass positive. So this is a very straightforward uh, set of questions that were asked in INI set. Uh, exam this year.